Hello everyone, this is Devin Adams. Welcome to our second video in our SSL VPN IP address assigning. That is such a long title, by the way. I had no idea how to shorten that. But uh, as you know from the last video, our goal here is to have IP addresses from our SSL VPN tunnel users uh, be assigned based off of their user groups on where they belong. So marketing will get one. Um, uh, sales will get another IP address range. Anyways, so in this video we are going to create those address objects because that's the first step and then we're also going to configure each of the portals for them. So let's go ahead and start and let's do that. So uh, if you guys can remember, I'm gonna kick Paul off here by the way. So let's see here. Sorry Paul. It's not your day buddy. Alright, there we go. So if you guys remember uh, in our last video about authentication, I'm kind of just building off of the same lab here. Uh, let me go to my users and devices and user groups. So we have some um, some groups here. And let's see, we have a sales group, we have a management group, we have a marketing group, right? We also have a support group. So we're going to pick IP address ranges that will pass out to each one of these groups depending on how they authenticate through the SSL VPN tunnel. So um, this is using LDAP and remote authentication. So the users are actually not stored on the 40 gate. So it's going to query this domain controller right here. And there is videos on how to do that. Uh, but we got to pick out IP addresses to give to these groups. And we kind of we kind of got to plan that real quickly. So let me go to networking real quick and just look at the IP addresses that we have physically on the 40 gate. So, uh, right now we're using a 10.0.1 and I know for a fact that this lab environment that we created and, and yes there is videos on how to create your own GNS3 NSC4 lab um, there is a whole set of devices over here that I have hidden that are using the 10.0.2 range so I'm gonna begin my IP address assigning right with 10.0.3 so I'm just gonna come over here and maybe maybe uh. I don't know, just make it a new note here. So we'll say uh, sales, they'll get the 10.0.30 network slash 34. Uh, marketing, we'll get the 10.0.4. And then uh, management, right? Like our, our, our admins, our administrators, not our actual system admins, but the people who sign our paychecks. All right, there we go. And then anyone coming from support can just have a 10.0.6.0 slash 24. There we go. Sure, just wanted to write those down so I can stay a little bit organized here. Got to do a little bit of planning. All right, so now the first thing we're going to do before before any any configuration on the SSL VPN is to create objects, address objects for those ranges so we can plug them into our configuration settings. And how do we accomplish this is that we go to policy and objects, we go to addresses, and we just start making them. So we'll do create new address, right? And then we'll call this uh, uh, sales uh, SSL VPN. And we'll say 10.0.3.0/24. Okay. And then the next one was marketing. So we'll say uh, marketing. Uh, let's see here. SSL VPN. 10.0.4.0/24. Few more to go. And then here we'll call it. Um, uh, what was the next one? Management. Management. I don't even know if I'm spelling that right. That's okay. I always do these way too late, guys. So. Pardon if these are kind of crappy. 10.0. What was it? 5.0. Oops. Zero slash 24. And the last one should be support. Okay. 
Okay, 10.0.6.0 slash 24. All right, looks good. Now, we just made four address objects, and objects is what we use in our configuration, right, to define those ranges. Now, that might be a lot when you're looking at the firewall policies here, when we're configuring it later. So we can actually group a whole bunch of them together and call that essentially um, SSL VPN user groups or IP ranges. We'll just call it SSL VPN IP ranges and we'll stick all of these guys in here. And the reason why we're doing this is so it just looks a little bit cleaner Look, I'll even add this bottom one in there. Actually, you know what? Only addresses that are not associated with the interface are allowed to be associated with SSL root. We might not be able to do that. We'll try it though. No big deal. All right, there we go. Never know, we might use that later on. So but there we go. So we have the objects. Now let's go ahead and configure the SSL VPN portals themselves. So we're gonna go down to VPN. We're going to go to our portals, and we have one for sales, all right? But we got to configure that, and we got to change this now. Not to be one that's automatically passed out, but our sales range. And you can kind of hover above this to get the, the screen tip, okay? So that looks all right. And then we're going to create a new one, and we're going to call this marketing. Marketing, SSL, VPN, and we'll say our routing address is our local LAN, right? And our source IP pool is going to be marketing, okay? And we'll hit all right. Then this one will be uh, management SSL. Here we go. Nope. The routing address is saying, so split tunneling, guys, just as a review from the last videos, is saying only send, um, only send through the SSL VPN tunnel traffic that is destined to are 10.0.1 so because I don't care about my end users going to bugsbummy.com or, or you name your favorite I use your imagination anyways I don't want to see what they're doing management all right and then last but not least is going to be support support SSL VPN all right Z routing Okay, support. All right. See, we now have our groups. Okay. Uh, I guess I didn't have to put the SSL VPN. That looks like crap, but you guys hopefully get the gist of it. So, but we're not done quite yet. We still need to go to SSL VPN settings. And now, instead of saying, hey, automatically do it, I want to specify the ranges. And as you can see here, we can select multiple. Isn't that cool? Plus, maybe we have like a catch-all, right, of, of this one for generic people that we don't define and might need to go to the web portal instead of uh, the SSL tunneling. Um, but there you guys go. Okay. And then also down here, we have to be very specific. So now we're going to say user groups, and this is what actually binds the two. We're going to say marketing. All right, gets the marketing SSL VPN portal that we just configured. And then we say management gets the management SSL VPN tunnel we just configured. All right. And then also support gets the what? The support SSL VPN tunnel. And then everyone else just gets web access. So, sure. Looks good to me, but we're not done quite yet. This warning right here is just about the um, the certificate that's built in. That's going to be a whole other set of videos if anyone cares to see those. Um, I might do a, a series on getting cert errors not to happen. 
at least trying our best, right? So, all right, just hit apply twice there for good luck. Ha ha. All right, so, um, but we're still not quite done yet. We still need to go over to our uh, policy and objects, IP4 policy. All right, and as you can see here, we already configured this from the last video, but now we're going to go ahead and edit it and include those other groups and those other and those other um, uh, authentication groups also. I wonder if it'll let me do this. Hmm. We'll see there. We'll see there. So uh, let's see what else do we got here. Supports. Management marketing. All right, that should work. That should work. So, and then also just for good measure, we'll log allow traffic, and we'll do all sessions just to to kind of um, see it. You know what? Actually, we don't need that. I'll just use the monitor SSL log to see it happen. So, all right, guys, that is it. So in theory. In theory, we should be able to log in now with Paul again, but Paul should get a 192.168.3, or no, no, I got that wrong, 10.0.1.3 number instead of that random 10.212 number. So, um, all right, sweet, sweet. So when we get back in the next video, we'll do some, uh, actually, you know what, no. I'm just gonna wrap it up. There's really no reason to record another video. So let's 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 just do it. It'll probably not work, but that's okay. Um, and for those that have never seen my videos before, I'm really big on things not working because that's how we learn. So here's Paul's computer. What is Paul doing? Like I said, I don't even want to know. And as you can see, we are not connected to headquarters. All right. So, but he's gonna go ahead and connect. So Paul and his password hopefully he connects bum, bum, bum. hey he did good times good stuff by the way if you guys did watch my last video about the SSL VPN where I had the error with the 40 client that happened to me again too so when I clicked here and I tried to connect to the interface from here right it didn't work but then when I right clicked over here and I had hit connect it from this interface it worked so kind of weird there I wonder if I discovered a 40 bug oh my gosh you can see right away that we have a 10.0.3.1 IP address what let's do go ahead and double check that on the the FortiGate so uh, let's go to our our monitor let's go to our SSL VPN monitor what? Oh, that's awesome. Isn't that cool, guys? All right, so let's actually see if it's working. Let's see if he can hit his HR portal. So, all right, let's see here. 10.0.3.1. 10 and nothing. And nothing. Oh, come on, Paul. Are you going to go there or what? I guess I have to hit enter, guys. So remember in, in another video, we, we made a web server here to maybe represent an intranet site, so like an HR portal. And as you can see, Paul can get there just fine. All right. So, But let's go ahead and put this to the test. So Paul is really dating Sally, and Sally and Paul share an apartment, and she needs to get on now. So she borrows his laptop. Shady. Anyways, and <laughs> connects to HQ, but this time she's going to put in Sally's name. And Sally's a part of the marketing group. All right, let's see if this works. I'm nervous, guys. Here we go. And as you can see, Sally, who's a part of marketing, got the IP address of 10.0.4.1. And when we come back over here, Paul has now been replaced by Sally, right? And it passed out an IP address in the range that we defined. So there you guys go. Thank you for such an amazing question, by the way. Uh, someone who asked me during class about this situation. Uh, as you can see here, we 
we essentially are passing out IP addresses based off of authentication through an SSL VPN tunnel. And we did this by creating the objects of the ranges for the groups, right? And then we configured the SSL portals for each group and we assigned that object to the authentication group. And then we did it through the firewall policy and then we verified using two different groups that it worked. So hopefully this is helpful to somebody out there. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the, the videos and I'll see you guys next time.